Show me the man, and I'll find you the crime. Welcome to the Banana Republic of the United States of America. Joe Biden and the Democrats have, in a Manhattan courtroom this past week, found a way to make America just like China and just like Russia. It's called lawfare. You see, they really don't have anything to run on in that every data point that the government tracks for the economy is, well, well, shall we say, a whole. And all because of Joseph R. Biden, who's been wrong on every issue for his 50 years in elected office. But I digress. They've taken the leading candidate for President of the United States, whom it looks like is going to beat him. And what they did is they, well, they guaranteed a conviction in a Manhattan courtroom. A judge who hates Donald Trump and willing to bend the rules, and a jury who was given no other choice in their instructions but to convict. Well, we've got a lot to get into, so let's roll the video. It's a historic trial of a former president of the United States by his partisan adversaries. Whatever you think of the results, it's inconceivable in New York that anyone else other than Donald Trump would ever been indicted in this way uh, by Alvin Bragg, the elected progressive Democratic district attorney who campaigned on the fact that he would go after Donald Trump, that he had a history of going after Donald Trump. This is a very political exercise, and you have to say that it accomplished what it set out to accomplish. What they wanted was to have a situation where they could call Donald Trump a convicted felon in the run-up to the election. Mm -hmm. We have an elected Democrat who got that accomplished. He got a very friendly judge who ruled his way on every important thing and turn the jury instructions into a roadmap to conviction. So now I assume, with the mission having been accomplished, we'll have more procedural regularity, Shannon. As you just said, there'll be a pre-sentence investigation, mm -hmm. there should be a sentencing scheduled, and we'll go from there. But this case will be appealed, and I hope that there'll be more fairness and equity in the appeal than there was in the trial. Yeah, a couple of things uh, did stand out to me. One one was that there were a couple of places in the jury instructions where the judge actually pointed the jury to specific pieces of evidence and said, these are pieces of evidence you can consider, for example, in trying to determine whether uh, there were falsified business records. You can look at these bank records. You can look at these invoices. That was a surprise to me because generally jury instructions don't include references to specific pieces of evidence that the judge seems to be pointing the jury to. Uh, those who practice New York law may have uh, some other take on this, but, but that was a little bit of a surprise. Earlier this afternoon, Donald Trump was arraigned by a Manhattan grand jury on 34 felony counts. This case is an abomination. You know, it's obviously political. Seven years to try to come up with this case. They're just wrong on the law. The only crime that Donald Trump is being prosecuted for is the crime of running for president. Political persecution at the highest level. They've quite frankly given up on trying to beat him at the polls. Either going to steal it or stop it by law firm. A Democrat prosecutor elected on a get Trump platform. What's going on here is a disgusting disgrace. This is the Democrats' entire strategy to confine President Trump to a dirty criminal courtroom and keep him off the campaign trail where he can bring his winning message to voters across this country. New York has become a legal banana republic. They are so determined to get Donald Trump. Look, convicting Donald Trump, that's all they have. I think they have no cards, and they're depending upon Trump getting convicted. That Trump train doesn't show any signs of slowing down. The only verdict that matters is the verdict at the ballot box. Okay, get a load of this. Biden checks his watch, makes a few comments about the verdict, and then watch his evil expression when asked a question. Just checking this afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Before I begin my remarks, I just want to say a few words about what happened yesterday in New York City. 
the jury heard five weeks of evidence, five weeks. They found Donald Trump guilty on all 34 felony counts. And it's reckless, it's dangerous, it's irresponsible for anyone to say this was rigged just because they don't like the verdict. The system should be respected, and we should never allow anyone to tear it down. It's as simple as that. That's America. That's who we are. And that's who we'll always be, God willing. Thank you very much. Mr. President, can you tell us, sir, Donald Trump refers to himself as a political prisoner and blames you directly. What's your response to that, sir? Do you think the conviction will have an impact on the campaign? We'd love to hear your thoughts, sir. Should he be on the ballot, sir? Well, I guess the verdict reflects badly on Joe Biden. I think, Jesse, that it is going to backfire. This conviction is going to backfire on the Democrats. Um, I think every time that President Trump has been indicted, that his, his approval ratings actually increase, his, uh, his popularity increases. I think there's a large number of Americans who are going to see this as the politicization of, and the weaponization of the enforcement agencies. It's bad for our democracy. I think the Democrats feel like they have the DNC, feels like, it's like it has a candidate that cannot win fair and square in the polls. And so they have to win in the courts. They have to win by clearing the deck and getting their other opponents out of the race. I'm not a fan of President Trump's, but I want to win. I want to beat him in a campaign on a level playing field. I want to talk about his issues, about locking down the economy, shutting down 3.3 million businesses, about running up a $34 trillion debt, about engaging us in forever wars and doing favors for Wall Street. I don't want to beat him in a courtroom. I think the America, it's not good for our country, and um, I think it's really going to backfire on the Democrats. Joining me now, CNN senior legal analyst Ellie Hoding and criminal defense attorney Mark O'Mara. Ellie Hoding, to you, the strongest grounds for appeal are what? So I think the top grounds for appeal is the fact that we had a state court here, a state prosecutor, enforcing, in part, a federal election crime uh, for the first time, actually, in U.S. history. We've never before seen a case where any state or county level prosecutor has charged as part of their case or as a sub part of their case a violation of the Federal Election Campaign Act. So this is the first time that's happened. It was briefed to Judge Mershon. Judge Mershon said, I find it OK. I find it acceptable under New York state law. But that's going to be issue 1A on the appeal. We don't know what the answer will be. It's unprecedented. Marco Mara, likelihood of a successful appeal. I think there's a great likelihood, and the reason why is there are a number of issues. Ellie brought one up. I have always complained about the way this jury was. It was not handled during the trial. I think with the massive focus on this case that they should have been sequestered, they certainly should have been sequestered during the deliberations. I think they should have been sequestered for the week before. Uh, let's bring in House Speaker Mike Johnson. He joins us right now with reaction. Uh, Mr. Speaker, good morning to you. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Uh, we were just talking about how uh, ever since the verdict, uh, a lot of money has been coming into the Trump uh, campaign. And I was just reading in Punchbowl that the National Republican Congressional Committee, you guys raised three hundred thousand dollars last night which eclipses only the day you were elected speaker and you raised 175,000. So obviously, uh, you know, angry voters are motivated voters. They are, and there's good reason to be motivated, of course. I mean, this entire thing is absurd. I'm, I'm a lawyer, I was a litigator for 20 years. I was in court with President Trump a few weeks ago to see this for myself. What happened there was outrageous. And you're right, the American people see it. This is a, a purely political exercise, not a legal one. And everybody knows that. They know intuitively that it's wrong and the people are outraged. And I'm telling you guys, something is happening out there. People see what is going on. They see that the Democrats are so desperate because President Trump is crushing Joe Biden in the polls. They see the Democrat Party and the left so desperate to stop him 
that they'll risk the destruction of our entire legal system to do it. And that is not hyperbole. That's what's going on here. We broke records on our on our fundraising platforms last night. We'll continue to do that because that's how us in Congress, members in Congress, are going to help stand with him and defend this and make sure the right verdict is uh, rendered November 5th. So, that's the American people's verdict. Do you think that the Supreme Court has a duty to step in since this will impact um, you know, the election. I know we want to act like he's just a normal guy, but he's a leading presidential candidate. The voters should know what's going to happen here. So what do you see playing out in the legal system? Well, there's a lot of developments yet to come, but I, I do think, I, I do believe the Supreme Court should step in. Obviously, this is totally unprecedented, and it's dangerous to our system. I mean, we've all discussed this before, and you all talk about it all the time. This is diminishing the American people's faith in our system of justice itself. And to maintain a republic, you have to have that. People have to believe that justice is fair, that there's equal justice under law. They don't see that right now. And I, I think that the justices on the court, I know many of them personally, I think they're deeply concerned about that as we are. We'll be overturned, guys. There's no question about it. It's just going to take some time to do it. Well, right. Uh, go ahead. It, thanks, Brian. In the meantime, the sentencing date is July 11th. That's after the first debate. So the two candidates will debate. Then there's going to be the sentencing date. How is that going to affect the RNC? What if he has home confinement? He can't go? Does the convention still happen? Does he zoom in on the screen? How does he campaign? If he goes uh, to, to prison, what does that look like? Will he be in prison with Secret Service on Election Day? We're in uncharted waters, right? Obviously, there's no prohibition against him uh, being elected president, uh, even if he's confined somewhere. Right. But I certainly hope that doesn't happen. I, you know, there's lots of discussion. We talked about it all last night. We'll, there'll be more discussion today about how we might adjust things and the schedule and all of that. But I'm going to tell you what's, what will happen. I predict this will increase turnout on our side. He will win decisively. He will become the next president. He was already, as I said, crushing Joe Biden in the polls. I think as this plays out and people get more and more frustrated about it, I think it will help us. And that huge enthusiasm gap that already existed between the Trump and Biden campaigns will be even wider. People now see Donald Trump as a symbol of something. He is, right. He's more than just a, a, an individual. He's a symbol of fighting back against this government corruption, the deep state, the bureaucracy and all the rest. And we need his leadership in the White House now more than ever. The American people are focused on issues out there. Um, a lot of people I've spoken with are angry that they see a weaponized judicial system going after not just a former president, but average Americans uh, for standing up for life. For example, you go to jail, go to a go to a, um, a school board meeting and stand up for the curriculum of your children. You go to jail. This is the type of, 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 of issue that will mobilize a lot of voters out there, regardless of political party. But I keep hearing the left saying Joe Biden should focus on the issues and he probably will. The problem is he's focused on the wrong ones. Of course, he's going to talk about things like J6 and abortion and, and threats to democracy. People care about that. But it's nowhere near the failed policies of his border issues where people are pouring across by the tens of millions, where you can't pay for gas or for groceries, where we have wars breaking out all over the world, crime spiking in our major cities. These are all the effects of the failed policies of Joe Biden. That's what Donald Trump needs to be talking about. That's what we need to be talking about as Republicans, because it's such a unique situation. You've got two people, both of whom have concrete records as president of the United States. And poll after poll shows the American people trust the policy prescriptions, the America first agenda of Donald Trump over Joe Biden because they know they had record setting success in record setting time, regardless of race, religion, color or creed. That's what the election is going to be down to. And I think the Biden campaign knows it. That's why they're still concerned. I know they desperately want Trump gone, and I, I know that they desperately want it codified that Trump cannot run again. Because make no mistake, they remain scared to death of you, and they remain scared to death of Trump. Uh, Trump, 75 million, 80 million votes. And I'm going to tell you, you're not going anywhere. Even if Trump does, you're not. They can't separate you from Trump. And more importantly, they can't separate you from the ideas. They can't separate you from MAGA. They can't separate you from Make America Great Again, which I think remains one of our big campaign strengths going forward. They believe that they can, they can destroy this bond that exists between you and Trump if they somehow 
make Trump look bad, make Trump look like a reprobate, embarrass you about Trump. They can't do it because you came before Trump. Show me the man and I'll find you the crime. Welcome to the banana republic of the United States of America. Hey, is this mic on? 